Welcome back to Vegas Live with Nina. And you know, it's nothing like two blondes on a set, both dressed in black. Well, one has trousers and one has a skirt on. So we have to, and one has a hat. In the meantime, um, Linda um, Chapman is uh, an actress, a filmmaker. A, well, she's everything, a speaker. What don't you do? Well, I've done pretty much a lot of diverse things in my life. You Even suck. once I was a Zagart restaurant critic in the 90s. So you that were was a funny. restaurant critic? Yes. I hope you said good things about the restaurant. <laughs> yes. You did? I did. You and did? I loved it. And, and you like that? Yes. So you like writing for magazines and different yes, things like that? Do you yes. still do that? No, no, I do inspirational speaking now. So, you know, this word inspirational speaking, is, is sort of not confused me, but it's, it can mean a whole bevy of things. So to inspire somebody is inspirational speaking, correct? Yes, so yes. you're trying to inspire people out there yes. that don't quite know whether to go left or right or indifferent. That's true. Um, how do you actually, when you go out on stage, you know, you've got to smile and laugh and like, you know, the world is really wonderful and you're not like one of them because <laughs> you're teaching them what not to be. How do you come out on that when you come out? The first things you say, what do you say? Well, I say that uh, we're, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit and in that God set into, upon creation, okay. the laws of consequence. So he yeah. really doesn't do anything bad to us. It's Who, right God? To God? God doesn't do anything bad to anybody. He doesn't. He's, no, no, no. He loves everybody. That's right. And people he, blame him for uh, everything. No, 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 no. <laughs> Let me just clarify that one thing because that is definitely not true. God loves everybody. He doesn't speak. I don't know how he takes care of everyone, though, but he does. Yes. And he doesn't speak bad of anyone. He really no, doesn't. He and doesn't. I think. Well, yes, so yes. I did not know we were on this kind of spiritual thing of God as well. So this is rather um, encouraging. Yes, this is yes. rather nice. Well, he so told you're me. very yeah. He told, he told me. He, what did he tell he, you? He told me. He said, "Upon creation, I created the laws of consequence. If you do wrong things, you get bad consequences. It's your choice." If you do right things, you get good consequences. Yeah, absolutely right. I told somebody the other day, I won't mention the name, but she's floating around her today. And I said, if you don't do the right thing, she said, well, no one will know. I said, mm -mm. one person will know. One person. God. God. But if and you if do... you think you hide it up, you can hide it somewhere. You know, it doesn't matter. That's true. You can't hide it. You cannot hide a thing. Not from God. That's right. But if you make godly choices, you get great consequences. So, okay. So, all right. So, we're getting a little bit on the religious side, which is not normally what I do because I'm obviously all religions and I respect everybody's religion, everybody's color, everybody's language, everybody's everything. I've, I've always been that way. Yes. So, how do you know what you just said when God tells you what to do? How do you know it's God telling you what to do? Well, I've made a mistake a few times thinking it wasn't God when it was God. And then oh. I've made the mistake of thinking the other way, the other way that it was God when it was really not God. <laughs> but there was an interesting experience that happened to me in Israel in 1983. Oh, how wonderful! You were in Israel. I'm I jealous. loved it. I'm jealous now. I went for ten days. Oh. It was so wonderful, and I was speaking in my prayer language, which is the language that anoints us. Okay. And uh, I spoke for day and night. Even my friends that I had a room with, she said, "You." Speak Speak in your prayer language while you're sleeping, Linda. <laughs> and but I had a radiance about me. And then when we left Israel mm -hmm. that day, people would walk up to me and say, "You have starlight shooting out of your eyes." And I said, "What do you mean?" And I went and looked in the mirror, and I looked in the mirror, and I saw little light sparks, little light sparks, just out. shooting out of my eyes. And I'd only seen it on four people in my life. Wow. I saw it on Billy Graham when I met him. I saw it on on um, Robert Schuller. Oh, Robert Schuller! When I yes. met him, yes. I saw it on Henry Catrona, who lives here in Vegas now. Oh, but wonderful! But he was the pastor of the Hiding Place in Los Angeles, and so I believe I've met him. I met many people. He's a fabulous there. Yeah, minister, many, yeah, pastor, ministers, yeah. Yes. And so it was interesting that I looked and I went, you know, there's something about praying over everything, never ceasing. There's something about dwelling in the high place with okay, the Lord. Okay, so when you say praying without anything ceasing, what do you mean by that? Because not to cease is not to go away. That's right. Um, so if yeah. whoever doesn't understand what ceasing means. Yes. Um, so why, why would you pray for some, some things we would like to 
disappear and go. Um, some things we want to keep and treasure. Yes. Well, the thing is, is that you fellowship with God. And in that fellowship and that worship, you gain wisdom. Yes. Now, Adam made a bad choice when he allowed Satan to seduce him into partaking upon the tree of the knowledge It's funny, of the I brought that up some time ago because it was, yeah. and, and people don't understand. Now, they asked me a question, and, and I said, well, if he hadn't eaten the fruit because the devil made him eat the fruit. He didn't make him, Adam made the choice. Well, but Adam made the choice. But he seduced but him. He's, yes. He seduced yes. him. Well, and no, he also made him make the choice of, of eating the fruit. Yeah, you know. yeah, he seduced yeah. him in a way. Yes. The devil yes. lies in a very beautiful way. Yeah. If he didn't, yeah. we wouldn't buy the lie. <laughs> there you go, there you go. So what made you go into all this sort of um, uh, religious and, and godly um, part of the world in your life? Because you are, you are a singer? I did sing on the Joy Bishop show. And I did more comedy, though. I did laughing, Bob Hope, Joey. You did laughing? I did laughing with Goldie. You were in one of those squares? <laughs> well, I was, I was dancing and doing skits with uh, Dick and Dan. Oh, how I wonderful. Did have, I had words to say. So I, never had, had I never got in the square. I never got in the square. You never got in the square. But you've, <laughs> had quite a, you've had quite a life then with celebrities. Yes. So who yeah. else have you danced with and sung with and oh performed my gosh. with? Well, I did decorate. I was a decorator for 36 years. And I did decorate for Frank Sinatra in 71 when I was oh, an wow. apprentice with my cousin Joan Billings, Billings Interiors in Palm Springs. And... Um, so there's a funny story there. That's kind of I shared Did it in the Did you take Frank Sinatra? No, he was just divorced from Mia Farrow. Oh, but I, <laughs> the first night I met him, this is a cute story. Um, I was three days in Palm Springs and 19 and very young, and my cousin Joan took me to the Metropole for dinner and supper club. You have the comedy Which guy, the songstress, then, how they the band. Yes. You know, it's a full You're show. You're all dressed up. You're dressed yes. up. It's it glamorous. Was very it's then. a supper show, yeah. you know. And in Palm Springs, and there was only one table left. The table for ten. The booth. The place was packed, and we ate our salad. Mm -hmm. And then in comes Frank Sinatra with Henry Fonda. Oh. And my cousin Joan didn't lift up her head. She just kept eating and eating. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, we're going to have our dinner in the kitchen. That's Frank Sinatra and Henry Fonda. And there's no seats in the place. Frank is talking to the maitre d' and back and forth. And the maitre d' comes up. Miss Billings, Mr. Sinatra would like to know if he can join your table. Three days in Palm Springs. How fun. Ended fabulous. up with Frank Sinatra's house for after dinner drinks. Oh, how fun. You know, it's funny. I was in his house in Beverly Hills yes. when he had the two houses. And I got the opportunity, um, coming from England, I got the opportunity to talk to him for some time. Yes. And it was the most refreshing um, conversation, I think, for him too, because I was from Europe. Yes. So I knew a little bit what to talk about. Yes. I wasn't just nothing, you know. Yes. And it, he was such a nice man. Kind. He was Very kind. kind. Very protective of me. Oh, extremely! How sweet. And everybody kept thinking he's going to ask you out. But you know, he had just had a young girl that he got divorced from. Me, he didn't want another one. I don't think so. But he, he was, he was, he was so nice. sweet to me. Oh. If I walked in a room in Acapulco or, or New York or anywhere, and he was there, he would stand up, take his glass, and come and join us. He would oh, introduce me to everybody, and then he'd say, "Join my table." I say. I'm with 10 people. If I'm a do sometime, I might take you up on that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So that's one of your sort of things. What else have uh, sort of gone on in your life that sort of made an impact on, on who you are and what, what you've become? Well, uh, again, I will say it was in the 70s, and I was in a club. It was Sergio's Le Club in Beverly Hills. And I walked in, and there was my girlfriend, Sally Lanovich, a famous designer with yes. chokers and clothes. And yes. she sold Caesars and all over the Trump Tower. She, her stuff was sold all over the world. And uh, she's sitting there, and I said, boy, you're radiant tonight. Where have you been? 
Beverly and, Hills. Yeah, and she said, I've been at uh, Rosemary Clooney's home. Um, Gabri and Debbie Boone are doing Bible studies there. Oh, how amazing. <laughs> See, we just forget that, you know, everybody does a Bible study, correct? Yeah, yeah. We all do Bible studies. Yeah. And, and they're very important, aren't they? Well, they are because that gives us a chance to be who we need to be, own our identity and Who Christ. we really are, yeah. rather sort of yeah. being always on a platform yeah. and always yeah. being out there, always yeah. sort of... Um, what other sort of... In your whole life, you've done many, many things, and obviously, um, what has been the most outstanding thing that you've done that's helped your career and helped you and you felt, wow, I really think I achieved, I, I've achieved life of what I want? I think it's now, in my life wow. right now, uh, I've done a lot of exciting things, um, covers of magazines, newspapers, everything, but I think the most exciting thing is sharing the word of the Lord and having people understand to own your identity in Christ, because a lot of people say, oh, aren't you an angel? I say, no, angels never get the right for redemption, only mankind gets that, yeah. and what Adam gave away it's only the word of creation yes. had to come to create in us the new life. And uh, there's, there's nothing like having new life, however old you may be, because you're mm. actually only as old as you feel. Yeah. And I think both of us are pretty up there, um, though um, it doesn't matter uh, whether we're up there or not. My age doesn't make any difference because to me. Because you're young well, at heart. Well, yeah, well, number one, I can't do anything about it, number one. And number two, <laughs> I really don't. I'm, I'm quite happy. And if people yeah. criticize me for my age, I don't mind. You know, maybe go and get a life yourself. I don't know who could <laughs> criticize you. You're well, a hot yeah. mama here. Well, you're a hot mama too. <laughs> Two hot mamas here. So, all right. So you're into priesthood. You're into all this sort of religious thing right now. What do you have that you're going to go ahead on? You know what you've done back here. You've done all these incredible things which she has. Now, what are you? What are you aiming for right now? Well, I'm writing she's beautiful. a book. I'm writing a book, oh. and so are you. Yes, yes. And uh, I've had several experiences, like I opened up with some. I made bad choices, thinking it was God, and then I made good choices, thinking it was God and it was Satan. And so, you know, it's a strange thing that goes on. I've had a lot of diverse experiences. I was shot with a gun when I was eight years old. Been wow. in an airplane accident when I was uh, 1973. I've wow. had a man try to rape me, choke me to death. And each time, God has pulled me through. I've had twice in my life angels come in a room where men were trying to harm me. And they were thrown across the room wow. because I said a prayer. I said, Quickly. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. I will not be Well, you defiled. are the temple of your body and the Holy Spirit, yeah. but you are the temple of yourself. Yeah. And you've got to make well, that God very strong. We're spirit this beings. Is, this is what we are. Yeah, and and we have to, beings. we are spirit beings. Absolutely. When you say you're a spirit being, just for our audience out there, when you say I'm a spirit being, explain that a little bit. So a lot of young, the younger generation don't really know what that is. Well, we're created originally in God's image. That's omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipresent. Now, Adam gave away that power, yeah. but Jesus Christ gives us back a partial of that power because this flesh was only to be a jacket for, the, for who we were. Well, it is a jacket. It is. Because if you don't have this flesh, you'll, it's funny you should say that. I'm in the bathroom a couple of weeks ago, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of looking at myself thinking, you know, if I didn't have this flesh, I'd be kind of a bag of bones on the floor. And it's funny how... There is nothing square on your body. Everything is round. Yes. Everything is. Everything yes. continues. Yes. And when you suddenly look at yourself in the mirror and you see this thing, I mean, you look. How did all this? <laughs> how did that happen? <laughs> what could we take it for granted? Yeah, but we're eternal beings. See, we we have the gift of eternity. Yes. It just depends on what your choice is in life. And um, an example of a good choice, and a, for the, this is for the younger generation. But a good choice for the right thing and the wrong thing, what would there be a difference in that of them understanding that? Well, I, I like to use the example of Adam because, you see, God knows everything. That's the unfortunate thing, but he, he does. He knows everything. <laughs> everything you do. it does not mean he wills it to be or he wants it to be. Those are the consequences. Yes. Choice. Choice. So I say, 
That's why we were talking about praying over everything never ceasing. Um, if you pray over everything, like when I get in the car, I say, Lord, protect me on the drive, protect the drivers around me. Well, you that's know? cool. You know, pray on the trip. So you're you know? really into it. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm obviously, you I know, really in religion. Am. I'm on, on all religions. Um, I don't pray um, on things like that, but I pray a tremendous amount. I more thank him of so many things that happen during my day yes. than I actually pray. I don't pray as much as I probably should, but I thank him so many times. And I never forget to thank him. That's the wonderful him. thing. We have to thank and love him. I love you, Lord. Well, I have to. But it's, yeah. it's, he just does so many things. Like mm -hmm. he'll make me go to the garage for no reason and the light's left on. Yeah. And I think, why did you do That's that? That's wisdom. That's the wisdom you get from the Well, Lord. I get wisdom all the time. Yes, Because that happens to me all the time. Yes, so yes. it's kind of, and it's like, you know, I'll, I'll go back in the house to get something, and I really don't need it, or, and I'll go back. And then there's something else that I went back in the house for. It was nothing to do with what I was going back in the house for. It was exactly. something else. Exactly. So these are the things you yeah. have to take notice of. Well, another little quick story. Let's say I was putting books on my floor under my mirror in my bedroom. Okay. And one day I walked by and said, Man, I'm getting too many books here. I need a I need a clean that up. I need a council here. Yeah. And uh, four days later, just out of the blue, I'm opening the mail and there's a, a little coupon for a discount at well, World Market or one of those stores, you know, World something. I said, Oh, I should go over there and look and see if they have a council. Well, I walked in, one piece of furniture left that was exactly perfect size. <laughs> see? And I but went, if you hadn't but followed see, your instincts, it. if you yeah. hadn't followed your instincts of, I'm going to go there and do that, yeah. and it's, it's anything out there you can do it with. Anything you need. Yes. Anything you want. You yes. think it, and God will provide that avenue for you to get yes, it if will. you're obedient and listen. Yeah. So you have Normally, to I throw those papers away. Yes. But for some this unknown one reason, reason well, just one reason, she just happened to look through them I and that's how. I looked through it. And so I guess that's the message, is to pay attention to your 24 hours a day ahead. Now, you can learn from behind and things that have happened to you, yes. but that's not really going to help you as of this moment on. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna, the experience is yes, but sometimes you want to forget a lot of them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but it's what's going forward more yes. that, that's, that's more important. Right. And also, is it how you treat people? Well, that's the key thing right there. What you just said, that's divine by God. Because Ephesians 4.32 says, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted. Oh, I wish we'd do that more in the other. world, please. You know, don't give evil for evil. No. Or, or uh, insult for insult. No. But give a blessing instead. Yes. For you were purposed to have a blessing. Absolutely. So you gain a blessing when you give a blessing. Funny you say that because people, you know, they get at me and their friends of mine say, Nina, why don't you get back at them? And I said, well, what, what, what do you do to get back? I've never gotten back at anybody. But do you know why? Uh, I don't know how to do it. I just, if somebody does something to me, I've got to get back at them. I'll get back at them for what? And then I've got to start thinking, what on earth am I going to do? And how am I going to... I don't... That's just something... You don't I, want meanness in well, you. Well, no, I just don't want... I just don't do it. I, well, no, I don't know how to do it. But I... No, I don't want meanness in me. But I don't know no. how to do it. You do it. You, you do love automatically, darling. You're walking love. I, well, I, if I can help people... I, like this show, Vegas Live with Nina. And I've got, oh, I've got Steve. I've got Lynn. I've got all this crew around. They're all helping. We're all putting this together. What are we doing? we're helping the entertainment business out there because yes. at the moment they definitely need us the entire need for us to get their voices out there to get them out there to get them back on the stage to get them you know working again to get them yes. singing again you know a singer and I guess a dancer or anybody in the entertainment business they have to practice every single day yes. a singer has to practice yes. every day otherwise they lose their voice I didn't know that but they do, they have to practice every day. How can, um, I don't know what you teach, but do you teach anything? Do you teach the Bible? Do you do a Bible I, study? You know what, I do a Bible study, okay. and I go to Bible studies where I'm a guest speaker. I go to Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis's Bible study in okay. Burbank. Now, of course, with COVID, California's closed down. I go to Diane. They're opening up. <laughs> I go to Diane Cannon's Bible study in, in uh, off of Sunset, in okay. her beautiful high-rise condo. And uh, everybody speaks there. She is a wonderful study because she gives a word or yes. two words, and then she says, find scriptures, memorize them, and then 
tell me what they mean to you. So everybody oh, in the group so they gets all get to involved. share. That's getting involved in acting yes. because that's what you do with acting. You learn a little script. Yeah. So she's bringing Brilliant. her acting into it. Yes, yeah, it's that's lovely. And then I go to uh, Gemma Winger's ministry in Bel Air. Okay. And she does radio shows, TV shows, and, and so on. And I'm a guest speaker there also. So I'm writing a book about my life, which is very diverse. What's uh, it going to be called? It's going to, uh, I have two titles. One is Be Love, Be What God Created You To Be. Be What God Created You To Be. And then. I think that's all you can be, actually. Yeah. Um, you could try to pretend to be somebody else, but it's not going to work because it's. Right. And everybody in the entire, like your fingerprint, every single fingerprint in the entire world is different. That's right. And that's like people. Yes. We are all different. Yes. Even if we're born in the same family or we're twins or we're whatever we are, we are all totally different with the way we think, how we do yes. things. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. But we have to learn, um, and I think this is what you're bringing over, um, to accept each other and understand each other and love yes, each other. and love each other. How can anybody reach you? Um, I'm prayercoachusa.com is my webpage. It's not complete yet. I'm learning how to put my videos <laughs> and my audios in it, but there's pictures and scriptures and so on. Wonderful. And then um, my email is holy spirit one written out o n e holy spirit one, one with a digit two at aol.com amazing well she's been a fabulous guest uh, giving us a little um, spiritual and understanding of what our life is we've all been through this um this covid 19 thing and we can't say just we've been through it it's the entire world has been through it. Yes. So it's been a test on all of us, not just one country. I think we forget that. We think it's only in Vegas, but it's not. It's everywhere. It's all over the world. This is world history. This is, this is world history. Massive this is world history. Massive world more, history. more so than and, ever in the world. And the whole world has sort of found out what we will do and what we won't do as well. So there's a lot of things in there that are sort of car two and two don't quite make four. But that's my own opinion, <laughs> which I'm entitled to. You're always entitled to your own opinion. Good, bad, right, or wrong, it doesn't matter. Um, you've been an amazing guest, Linda. And, well, that's my you know, pleasure. You're, you're, she's just a, a very, very good spirit on Thank that. You. Thank you for watching Vegas Live with Ninon. Don't forget to go to YouTube, subscribe, and uh, don't forget if you've got anybody sharing our, our programs, please do that. We're on the radio at the moment. Um, we're on I, I, iPod. We're, on, we're everywhere. We're, we're going all the way out there. We shall be right back with our next guest. You take care. If you enjoy the last show we just did and all the other shows, don't forget to subscribe Vegas Live with Ninon on YouTube. We've got plenty more coming up, and our guests are amazing. So don't forget to subscribe. We'll be right back. Vegas Live with Ninon.